Nobbin feel about it? <laughs> to be honest, Harry, I was expecting it. Yeah? Yes, but I don't care. I've got plenty of work in the pipeline. Oh, yeah? What are you up to? Yes, I'm still doing the Lady Gaga look-alike work. <laughs> can't read my, can't read my, no, he can't read my book of quiz. She has got to love nobody. Can't read my, can't read my, no, he can't read my book of quiz. She has got to love nobody. Pop, 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 poker face, pop, pop, poker face, pop, poker face. <laughs> Bang goes the winter weather now, which attempted to recreate Britain's winter weather in a studio. And it threw up some fascinating facts and figures. So now that we know the cloud is 400 metres thick and contains about 300 grams of water per square metre, we can work out how much the cloud weighs. And it's quite a number. That works out at 33 million tonnes of water. That is a lot of water considering they're not heavy-duty rain clouds and they're not that thick considering. That's correct. Yep. That just goes to show how much water is, is held within the clouds. There's a lot of water up there. It's a lot of water. It's the equivalent of five million adult elephants up there. <laughs> then, <laughs> from rain to wind. But what does 140 kilometres per hour, that's roughly 90 miles per hour, feel like exactly? Windy. <laughs> Pretty windy. It also attempted to show us how winds can reach speeds of up to 90 miles an hour using sheep. <laughs> Imagine this flock of sheep is our gust of wind hitting one end of the valley. The narrowing gap between the sides of the pen forces the sheep closer together, just like the wind at Capel Curig is squeezed between the sides of the valley. This forces the sheep to move faster and faster, and at the other end, they rush out in an outright run as they're released from the tight space. King Man in the Mirror now on DMAX, in which theatre impresario David King is on a mission. David prides himself on being a friend to the stars. Look Good to see you girls again. Another one. But now he's embarking on the show of a lifetime. He wants to bring Michael Jackson back to the stage. Good luck with that. <laughs> huh? Doesn't he read the papers? David's looking to bring a Michael Jackson tribute show to the stage, and he comes from a fine pedigree of entertainers. His mum, Trudy, is still very agile. We were all brought up with music, music, music. That's all we ever knew how to do that every night. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> and his sister, Wendy, can certainly give it both barrels. Only a cabaret ocean, and I love... Corking it, Wendy. <laughs> Dave has high hopes for his next. <laughs> Dave has high hopes for his Man in the Mirror show. So let's have a look at some of the people Dave's auditioning. There was Keith, who claimed to be a Michael Jackson look-alike. He's never really been a far away from me. Really, he's like my sort of right-hand man. He was sort of like a, a twin brother that uh, I never really had. Or look like. <laughs> then there was the more convincing Glenn, who'd come down from Cheltenham. Where have you come from today? Cheltenham in Gloucestershire. Good. How are the roads? Not too bad. Yeah. Could be better. OK. And tell me what it is you do. He's an Elvis impersonator. 
<laughs> of course, these sort of auditions open to the public can attract all sorts of nutters. Just as Mr King thought his day was done, it looks like he's found himself a stalker. Right, now, what, what on earth are you doing back? Because we said goodbye before, and I told you you're a nice guy, and I told you you weren't good enough. It's now nearly 6 o'clock at night. You've been sat here all day. What do you want in my life now? <laughs> I just want you to come to my secret supper club. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Grime Fighters. <laughs> Thank you. And I must say, I do like the Grime Fighters team, especially Pete. The question I always get asked is, how do I end up with bed bugs? Been on a date with Peaches Geldof? <laughs> My all-time favourite Grime Fighter must be Mike, the rubbish clearance expert from Stockport. We start, right, with the weak parts, yeah? So, the first one is... A. Right? B. C. I'll tell you what, you don't see this on the Antiques Roadshow. True. <laughs> Although last week they had a mummified dog's billy. <laughs> Is it me or does Mike look like someone famous? Is Mike really a 70s pop idol? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember doing that in the 70s. I used to have a moustache here. <laughs> That's when I used to have girls throwing the pants at me on stage when I used to be an international sex symbol. He could be David Soul. So, <laughs> with Silver Lady, it's Mike, the rubbish clearance expert from Stockport. <laughs> Mike. Uh, well, let's... So come to the <laughs> Good night. Thank you for watching. And there's more where that came from. Harry Hill's TV book Gold 3 is available now on DVD. To push the button, the show where two families battle it out for the chance to take home a massive cash prize. Who are ready to play games that are difficult, demanding, above all, desperately silly. Next tonight, Ant and Dex push the button live. <laughs> Not many visiting queens go around sniffing draw linings in stately homes.